Hey everyone, Matt Thomas here with your Teenage Mind Moment of the Week. Um, so I want to talk this week about why teenagers are so much more irresponsible than adults are. Or are they? I know that's kind of like the accepted thought, right? The accepted norm. Um, but, you know, just because people believe something doesn't mean it's true or accurate. Or as I always try to say or always think that the truth is somewhere in the middle. I, I'm kind of a big believer in that. So so let's look at this. So um, teenagers, are they more irresponsible than adults are? So there's there's this phrase that, you know, my parents said, and I'm sure many parents say, you know, it's like, hey, I trust you. I just don't trust your friends or something along those lines. And that's a very valid reason for, you know, like like not wanting your teenager to do something, right? They're like, mom, dad, can I do this? Like, no, why not? Uh, you know, I trust you. I just don't trust your friends. And that is valid because what happens is, so between the ages of 12 and 14, um, teenagers, they're, they're influenced by the opinions of their friends a lot. Uh, by the ages of 15 to 18, they show a similar level of influence by adults and teenagers' opinions about risk. So, so essentially, like adolescents go through this age where the opinion of their peers is more important to them than the opinion of their parents. And, you know, it's, I want to say it's a relatively short period of time, but it is a few years. And so what happens is, there, Blake Moore says, friends are more important to, to teenagers during adolescence than at any other stage in their life. So an, a Harvard-Yale study in 1991 suggested that young adults uh, and adults all take around the same number of risks when they're alone in optimal conditions with no distractions. But a critical factor in risk-taking for adolescents and to a certain extent for young adults seems to be the presence of peers. So essentially, teens and adults by themselves with no one around, take about the same amount of risks. So are teenagers, uh, do they take more risks than adults do? Not when they're by themselves. So no, they don't, according to a Yale and Harvard study. But when teenagers are with other peers, then they do take more risks because they're, they really, they, they value the opinion of their peers for those few amount of years. And what happens is teenagers go through what's called a, a looking glass self. It's a, it's a few years. It's a, it, it's what happens is they, when a child is a certain age, like, like six, seven, um, when a child's really young, right? Like toddler, infant, they don't care what they, they don't even know that people are watching them, right? They, they're, they don't care about uh, what others think, but they don't even know they're being viewed by others. And so when a child's like six, seven or so, they start to acknowledge that people are watching them, right? They're like, okay, yeah, mommy and daddy are watching me, you know, jump or dance or whatever. They still don't care. They're still going to act like kids, right? Um, but there comes a time in their life when a teenager, usually 10 or 11, they start to not only they know that others are watching them, but they start to um, kind of like think of, of how others view them. They start to be cognizant of like, okay, people are watching me now. I wonder what they see. I wonder how they see me and how they view me. And as they start to get older, um, they start to really imagine what others are thinking about them and um, almost exaggerating what others are thinking about them. Like, oh my gosh, what will other people think about me? And that's called the looking glass self. And they imagine the judgment or, or so, if you wanna say, that others are, 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 are giving them or putting on them. And there's a study, I wish I could find it. I, I, I wish I don't have it, but there was a study that someone did about haircuts. Like after a person gets a haircut, they tend to exaggerate what people think about their haircut by 25%. Um, so when someone gets a haircut, they're like, oh my gosh, everyone's looking at my new haircut. When the reality is like, no one really cares. Like someone could notice, hey, you got a haircut, cool, but that's it. But that acknowledgement, hey, you got a haircut, all of a sudden, according to the teenager, they're like, whoa, what, what are people thinking about my haircut? Oh, does it look stupid? Why are they looking at me? Uh, and they're, they're exaggerating how people view them. And that usually lasts for a few years. Again, going through the stage of toddlers don't even know they're being viewed to, all right, uh, I, I see that people are watching me, but I don't care to, oh my gosh, the way people watch me, like people are watching me, I should act a certain way. 
oh no, what are they saying about me? What are they thinking about me? And they're imagining all of these things that's going on in their head that other people allegedly are saying and thinking when the reality is, is they may not be. Um, so that's the looking glass self. And so teenagers will go, oh my gosh, if I do this, then according to my friends, I'll be really cool. So when they're with other peers, they do tend to take a little more risks because they're imagining that they're going to be seen a certain way, whether that's true or not. That's just what they're imagining. And to, to end this video, just to just to reiterate, um, you know, teenagers go through leaps, um, growth, maturity, just like babies do. Uh, babies have the label, right? They're wonder weeks, they're called wonder leaps, and uh, parents understand and they're cute for, for babies to do and parents are more patient with them. But to just understand that teenagers go through that same thing. They're going, they're processing all these new, this, this new thing going on. They're processing all these things in their head. And so, you know, as teachers and adults, we can under, hopefully understand that and be more willing to be patient with them because they're going through exactly what, what infants and babies are. Um, but we as adults tend to be more understanding that, that, you know, when they're infants and babies, then maybe when they're teenagers, but they are going through the same exact thing when they go through these leaps. So anyway, uh, I'm Matt Thomas, and that was your Teenage Moment of the Week.